Recently, Charlie Puth has catapulted into superstardom following his eager use of TikTok and video content, but his rise over the years has been almost unexpected, and his long journey of wins and failures gives us an interesting look at what it really takes to succeed as a global star today. On the surface, you could boil down Charlie's success to factors like his composition abilities, his sheer drive, and solid understanding of music marketing, but how did he make it all the way to the top, and what did he do to really set himself apart in a sea of talent. Puth's original ambition was... I went to music school because I wanted to be the best jazz piano player ever. He never intended on becoming a singer or even making pop music until he came across... Oh, please welcome my secret special guest to the show today. Justin Bieber! Justin Bieber in 2010 was the world's biggest breakout star and the admiration Bieber was garnering prompted Charlie to swiftly shift his focus from jazz towards writing songs and posting videos on YouTube. By June 2014, he found himself in LA with attention from artist publishing group CEO Mike Caron. On this trip, he wrote both Marvin Gaye and See You Again in just the span of a week and both tracks saw colossal success. 2016 saw the release of Nine Track Mind, his debut studio album, and the beginning of a trend seen throughout Charlie's career. Nine Track Mind and his second album, Voice Notes, both show Charlie referencing the same thing, the recording process. Voice Notes refers to the voice memo app on the iPhone he used actively to capture ideas for the album and even record some instruments. While the major label machine shows us many artists who have branded themselves with very stark, identifiable signature features like Billie Eilish's green hair, Ed Sheeran's tiny guitar, or Ariana Grande's high ponytail, Charlie seems to have built a brand off his unique quirks and deep obsession of the craft. Charlie has taken a creative process that has typically existed in the background, producing, songwriting, even mixing, and has pushed it into the forefront for the world to see. But at times, we see elements of his personality being forcefully emphasized. It sometimes begins to feel like a slightly gimmicky marketing ploy. We know that you have perfect pitch. Yes, I do. So we're going to put that to the test. Oh. And it proposes the question of whether the personality of an artist needs to be edited into small bite-sized chunks for mass consumption in order for an artist to really succeed. But none of what Charlie is doing or posting he does by accident. He seems to understand a few things that other artists can oftentimes overlook. You know. People nowadays who are listening to radio have never been more interested in what's happening behind the scenes in a song. He highlights all sorts of intricacies within the track and tends to put the spotlight more on the making of the song instead of the song itself. He also understands the power of vulnerability, sharing his lows in addition to the highs, like his open discussion of Elton John's harsh criticism of his work in 2019. And sometimes he just acknowledges his mistakes. Started singing, I sounded like a goat. Here it is. Some have gone as far as critiquing him for not really doing enough with his deep knowledge of music theory, but Charlie seems to have enough self-awareness to acknowledge these critiques head on and not always take himself or his work too seriously. Hey, what are you doing? Uh. <laughs> so what can we learn from the way he has built his career? Dating all the way back to his early YouTube days, Charlie not only invested time and energy into developing his craft, but he's always shown intent of being an early adopter to social media platforms. In 2020, he did with TikTok something similar to what DJ Khaled did in 2015 with Snapchat and became one of the first big celebrities to properly embrace a new platform and therefore garnered a lot of new eyeballs before the platform ultimately becomes saturated with many other big names. Whether Puth personally enjoys flooding your feed with content or has had pressure from his surrounding team to do so, he understands the deep disparity between ability and visibility, a concept well outlined by independent artist Russ. Ability versus visibility. Mm. And artists who might think they're really, really ill. And it's just like, damn, but why aren't more eyes on me? Mm. And then there's a lot of artists who there's a lot of eyes on them, but we know like they're not, it's not that dope. Charlie Puth knows that even with the utmost skill or ability, to really succeed, you also need high visibility. So are all modern musicians doomed to a future as content creators and savvy marketers, or will the audience eventually move on and shift to consuming music with only their ears instead of their eyes? It's hard to tell, but Charlie seems prepared either way.